Welcome back to day three. Five matches left until we crown a champion of stage three. Welcome to the desk, Lethal and Flea. That was not intended to rhyme. But look, at me. <laughs> look, look at me go. Forty be look so proud. You. He's over there like, yeah. He's like, next he's going to be throwing out puns. Never. It's not going to happen. Cypher versus Rafa. A rematch from the stage two finals where Rafa did win, but it went the distance. Now we're here in a best of five. This time tournament life on the line, not the championship belt. Flea, starting with you. Let's uh, talk about Cypher. Cypher, one of the all-time greats, of course. He is a fan favorite. Same can be said for Rafa. And I always personally just get so excited about this matchup in particular, right? What are some of the most legendary names in all of Quake? Cypher versus Rafa always deliver every time they've got to go up against each other. I've taken a quick look at some of their match history, and so far they've played five times during the Quake Pro League, and Rafa has won three out of those, including the last time they faced this was, of course, the Stage 2 Finals, like you just mentioned. And I just always love seeing these two go up against each other because they have such a long history against each other, right? This is one of the most renowned rivalries within the history of all of Quake. Of course, a very friendly and professional rivalry, but in between, I'd say, 2008 and 2014, Every Quake on victory basically alternated between Rafa, Cypher, Rafa, mm -hmm. Cypher, Rafa, Cypher. So these at one point were the only two players who had any sort of claim to being the world's greatest. And it's always a joy to see them go at against each other. You can see here Cypher's track record, seed number three in EU, only losing against Wenger and Avec, which is of course a tremendous accomplishment. Yeah, I have to say. Like you rightly mentioned, a legendary matchup, and I always enjoy seeing these two play against each other, no matter what it is. And I think it's more due to the fact that they both have such great adaptation and read their opponents so much that it gets really involved and gets really technical to a high degree in terms of methodical play. And of course, the aggression is there when you've got an offensive defensive kind of matchup, and it's just again, like I said before, a pleasure to watch and can't wait to see what the outcome is going to be this time around to see if Cipher can turn things around. It's uh, Pretty bleak for Cypher last time at the Stage 2 Finals, but let's see if it can turn around again. But what you've got to remember is, these two were in the Grand Finals this time around. Whoever loses is going to end up top 6, and whoever wins is going to progress to top 4 and have to face against Kilson. Yeah, completely different scenario than what we've seen the past few stages, and I think that's made this journey an exciting one either way or however you look at it. Now, Rafa didn't look super awesome in the first day. Uh, second day started out a little bit slow, but then last night's matchup that we saw near the end, suddenly it was like, a, it was like, oh, oh, it, Rafa's back. That was his matchup versus base. He had a great, great, great performance there. I, I believe the final score, yeah, it was a it was a 2-0 and a big, big victory for him. But now, you know, fighting his way through the lower bracket, he's truly tested. Others said he wasn't in previous stages. I disagree, but I think this might be his biggest challenge in Quake Champions yet. And standing in front of him, of course, Cypher. Both make great points about these players and what we might expect but I think we're all very excited to look at the picks and bands. And considering what I'm seeing on my screen, I'm really quite curious. And that is that is for sure. So uh, yeah, um, and anyway, Vale, Molten, uh, Deep Embrace, and then Awoken and Exile. And I look at that first uh, champ pick between Sorlag and Scalebear, and already I'm starting to worry a little bit uh, for Cypher. But what do you think? Oh, um, yeah, it's a little bit tough. Like Rafa gets his, in very quotes, like his best map, even though statistically it hasn't been his best, but picking up the scale straight away. And don't only forget, he's actually banned the slash, which means that Cypher cannot use the slash on Molden Falls. He's actually switched up to the Ranger versus the Strog. Right. It's going to be quite a difficult match. And we'll be seeing the Athena again on Deep Embrace for Rafa. And it's going all the way down. Yeah, I see what you mean. And I can see a point with in terms of the map picks here. It's going to be brutal to see how things will pan out from the get-go but Cypher will get a huge amount of momentum if he takes Rafa's map out straight away and gets that early lead in the series but yeah it's going to be a tall order in itself but it ha can be done it has been done Avec has shown that early on this weekend and then we'll have to see if Cypher can do it himself 
Interesting to note, Cypher is not playing a single light champion, it's either mediums or heavy. That no dot is in part due to Rafa very deliberately banning both Nyx and Slash away from his opponent. He knows what Cypher is capable of when he gets those champions in his hand, so he immediately wants to take those two tools of destruction away from his opponent. Now, the most interesting map I immediately know, this is Deep Embrace. As I was already mentioned, we get Athena coming out once again. Rafa, one of the absolute best Athena players in the world. It's going to be very difficult for Cypher to counter that. That aside, seems relatively standard. Keel on Exile, not something you see all that often going up against Ison with the turret. Awoken. Yeah, the visor on Awoken is always a bit of a mixed bag, right? It can sometimes really pay out nicely, but on the other hand, sometimes it definitely feels like the map is too small to make the most out of that ability, whereas Death Knight is consistently powerful with that burst flame strike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, Lethal, yeah, yeah it's gonna be tough because even look at the bans. Like, you see, Raph has preemptively banned the champion before the next map pick. So, bans the slash, knowing that Cypher's gonna select a Molten Force. He's banned the Nyx, knowing that Cypher's probably gonna go for it on Awoken. So, he's really thought far ahead in terms of what Cypher could be selecting going into each matchup. And uh, it must be pretty frustrating knowing that some of your go to champions and some of those map picks, he's had to select something else straight afterwards. So, bit of a pain. And even with the Eisen on the X, I'd like to see what. Uh, Rafa will do, especially with the turret. But Kill, we've seen him a couple times of Exile. Again, a rare occurrence, not really part of the meta. And the Galena being banned as well is not something you see every day. Yeah, before we, we start off, I mean, there's one observation that I have, and that is that it's uh, certainly not created necessarily by Rafa, but Rafa has definitely reinforced a scale meta, a uh, Athena meta, and even a DK meta early on in stage three. Seeing that he's got those champs in like three maps in the first four, I definitely have to agree with both of you that I think the picks tend to favor Rafa a little bit. Now, Cypher's been playing out of his mind. He is an adaptable player. But that aspect still worries me a little bit for Cypher. I do think that we're going to go at least four maps. Would love to see this go the distance because if the, it's anything like the finals was, going back and forth and flip-flopping between maps, would love to see that again. So Lethal Flea going to be your drivers here, take you on a little tour of this lower bracket matchup. And I'm going to take the sidelines and I'll see you when I see you. Thank you very much indeed. Wait, Flea, we're back together once again for another best of five. And I love the fact that it is a best of five because it means normally the better player comes out on top. And just let you guys know at home, every single match today will be a best of five with the grand finals being a best of seven later on this evening but Leon I know your predictions your thoughts on how this is going to go uh you could tell really weeks quickly said Matt four and then just did you got out of here straight away but I want to know what you think in terms of the outcome <laughs> yeah DJ Weed avoided being put on the spot this <laughs> yeah. time around Ah, honestly, like we summarized earlier, right? I think that the overall picks and bans tend to favor Rafa. There's a few really interesting ones in there for Cypher as well. For example, the Ranger. I personally rank uh, Cypher as one of the best Ranger players that we have in the Quake Pro League. But is it enough to counter what Rafa is about to bring? If Rafa can get back up to his top form, which is what he was talking about in the interview last night as well, then I am inclined to favor him. I'm gonna say three to one, three to two maybe in favor of Rafa but it all depends on the shape that he can bring today. Yeah, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to say the exact same. I don't think it's going to be a clean sweep either way. I do feel like it will go to map four or five, but we'll have a map five, don't we? So hopefully we will get to that stage on XR later on if it does. But first things first, we're going to start things off between Cypher versus Rafa, a legendary matchup here. And we're going to kick things off with Vale. Cypher's starting off with the Sawlag, Rafa with the scale. You know how much of a pain in the backside the scale can be, especially on this map. But let's see what Cypher can do in order to retaliate. Slow based opening to this map. Neither player immediately going all in. And Rafa primarily using the tribal to create some distance, but he gets caught by surprise. I think rockets are being exchanged and Cypher gets the high ground faster. Landing the final kill shot. Heavy will be going towards his opponent, but he will content himself with Mega. And I think he immediately wants to apply pressure because he knows that Rafa doesn't have LG yet. Might not even have rockets. Indeed, Rafa does not have the rocket launcher available. And so Cypher wants to punish him while his opponent is lacking these vital parts of his arsenal. But of course, you've got to be careful. That scale 
can build speed so easily. Oh, I love that as well. He dipped into the rockets, but Cypher knew straight away what Rafa was going to get up to here. Heavy is still up. Decided not to go for it. Decided to go for the Mega, and Rafa just made the assumption that he was just going to switch up to the Heavy. Good reads there from Cypher, and good way to bait him out to go straight into that TP. 68% LG by Cypher, 75% Rail by him as well. Now, of course, this is still the very early stages, and he hasn't had the most difficult oh, shots, wow, but look at this! Wow. Oh! No! <laughs> Disaster strikes! Rafa gets bounced up to the top ledge where he absolutely does not want to be. And that means that Cypher adds one more frag to the lineup. That was really unfortunate. And again, he's trying to get the trade out. Will he be able to? But he's going to try and do a little bit of damage before he gets cleaned up, which he has done. But then again, at what cost? You can see already Rafa's got a huge stack to his name. Megs up in the next 12 seconds. And Cypher just diving in. Good LG, but will it be enough? No, it will not. It cleans him up beautifully. As already again, having to restack. No lights, but it means that it could, could give Cypher a chance to trade. But can he? No, he cannot already. Just like that, within a few seconds, Rafa has tied up this first map. All of this stems from Cypher making a little bit of a misplay. When Rafa bull rushed him, he could have landed straight on the heavy, but I think he just wanted to avoid the bull rush so much that he tried to juke Rafa and instead drop somewhere more unexpected. But he ended up dying regardless and giving up the heavy to his opponent. If Rafa didn't have that armor off spawn, or rather to deal with Cypher when he spawned, then Cypher probably would have gotten the refrag instantly. And now it's immediately a tight game already. Rafa beautifully leveraging that momentum that he gained. And Scalebearer is, of course, so good at doing that. Cypher now just holding his ground and seeing what's going on with the heavy. He wants to contest it, but knows that Rafa will have to high ground. He's going to come in with the bull rush. And will he be able to take him out? We have to Ooh. see. Yes, he does. Gets the lead for the first time in this matchup. But those first three frags from Rafa was so quick in itself, almost by Cypher, but just not quite enough to equalize the scoreline. But he's coming in again to try and get the trade. Will he able to? Yes, but at what cost? He's already done a, take a huge amount of damage, but luckily for him, he's got the light, he's got the mega, and now he can breathe again. Cypher relief here as he's going straight against Rafa. He's exactly readable. Oh, he wants to take the risk. He's going to take it. Luckily for him, the rail was missed, but I think the rail would have come out just a little bit later after he picked up that heavy. So again, Cypher's got him exactly who he wants. The tick of damage is coming, but he's already healed up and Rafa gets away. Cypher has been relentless. Sometimes it has been working out in his favor. In other situations, it feels like he's kind of thrown away a frag or two, maybe three, by rushing too aggressively up the spawn. This might be another one that he drops. Rafa saved by that small armor that spawned just in time. But now Cypher is in a solid position to at least take away heavy, probably bully his way over to the Mega as well. I really don't see a way that Rafa can get stacked up on time, but look at this, the turnaround with the shoddy does a phenomenal amount of damage. Won't amount to much though, because Cypher still gets the frag around 5 seconds before the Mega spawns and now has a very nice cycle going, 20 seconds between Heavy and the Mega. Now Rafa does find his way over to all the weapons that he needs. This is the kind of patient play that we know him for, right? Instead of going straight for the item, instead he gives up some advantage in terms of stack to first secure the weapons that he needs. And now he's slowly going to start maneuvering his way back into it to make a play for control. Good read on Cypher as well, but the nice. rockets aren't connecting the way they needed to. And the Belarusian powerhouse is slowly starting to close the gap. Decent stack as well. Just managed to pick up the light and the mega. Just at the halfway stage, already 13 frags across the board between these two. But he's going to bull rush in towards the heavy. He's actually turned all the way back wow. to 180 just to trick Cypher into thinking he's going to go deep towards the mega, which he did not. Good rails again from Cypher looking for another, but instead just uses that acid spit to keep him at bay. But he's only on 10 HP here. But even then, you've got to see that Rap is actually trying to. Stop the injury. Oh, another good rail from Cypher. Looking for that last one to try and get the seventh frag, which he does not. But will he be able to find him? No, he doesn't. And realizes that it's actually gone all the way back to the rail, which means he's going to have a free heavy. This is much better from Cypher than what we saw the last couple of minutes. I also want to give a shout out to Rafa's timing right there. That was exquisite. Bull rushing over the pillar the moment that heavy spawned a fraction of a second earlier or later, and he would have missed out on that completely. That was absolutely phenomenal right there. 
little optimizations like that that Rafa is so good at. But this railgun, this railgun from Cypher is punishing, still at 75%. I called it out in the first minute or two, but added the disclaimer of, well, he's only fired around four shots, but Cypher <laughs> has continued landing that same amount of accuracy going into the sixth minute now, and that results in a tie game. So Rafa is going to take his own life. I like the aggression here by Rafa, knowing that he's got enough starting stack to just pick up LG, go through the teleporter and hold it down until Mega spawns and Cypher cannot brute force his way into that one and actually takes a significant amount of damage. He's in no position to make a play onto the heavy and this should be an easy frag for Rafa. Indeed, he will clean it up. That last rail that Cypher landed, that was on point though. This has given him an opportunity for a refrag, but he's got to find his opponent first. Is almost available, just Rafa just trying to keep on his toes. Just feeding himself information on where Cypher could be, realizes that he's on that top Mega spawn. Mega has been taken, Heavy's up in the next five seconds. How is Rafa going to contest this? As he's always managed to get up top, he could be able to get Heavy here. And even though Cypher was prepared for it a little bit earlier, he didn't have the high ground. And he's going to try and ball rush to try and recover and also go towards Cypher at the same time. Doesn't make it, misses the rail. That could have potentially been another frag here, and it still could be, depending on how Cypher holds his own across the mega good rocket there oh. from Rafa. He could easily go in now and maybe add another frag to the tally. I'm not sure if he can, but Cypher's just trying to stay alive. I'm not too sure if he realized how weak Rafa was. He's only on 33 HP. And now the mega will be up in the next few seconds, but Cypher's going in for the trade, and he gets it though. Just keep this as competitive as possible. Picks up the heavy. Now wonders where Rafa could be next. That's a risky push by Cypher, and he gets punished for it as well. Rafa spawning on the LG immediately makes his way down to Railgun. And yeah, if you jump down the bounce pad like that, you are in such a vulnerable position that Rafa is immediately going to be able to take advantage from. 10 points of L! Oh, he falls just short! I was still on Rafa's point of view. He was one step away from getting to a bubble before the final tick of acids took him down. And now it's all back to a tight game, 8-8. Eight to eight. But Rafa, he's tender, and Cypher will take him down once more, just before Mega spawns as well. Looking to do damage off the spawn first. I think he knows exactly where Rafa's going. That bottom area of the map to first get the railgun has been a hugely important weapon for both of these players so far. Cypher was still on 20, sorry, 75% rail percentage. He had 15 out of 20. This is how... How well Cypher's been playing in terms of his tracking. Still got a huge stank, but he wants to get as much value out of it as possible. He uses an acid spit to do some ticks of damage, but I don't think he expects him to be directly oh. in front of him, rather behind it. The LG, look at that flea. Beautiful stuff here from Cypher. Now up by two frags. And Cypher now, can he hold it to the very end? That was gorgeous. That's like 200 IQ play for real. Almost always people will be waiting on the other side for the teleporter, but not this time. Cypher just completely playing with his opponent's expectations, gets out of the room, 12 points of health. 40 seconds left to go, he realizes that Heavy is probably a bridge too far, doesn't want to take the risk, instead setting himself up over on this lower area of the map. Rafa hurt that bounce pad, he's going to push them, this should be a frag for the American, making it a tight game, and indeed with 20 seconds left to go. Actually no, Cypher still one frag in the lead, I misread the score. Still all the pressure is on Rafa. He's got the better stack, he's got the weapons he needs, now he just needs to find Cypher. And this is where mobility is going to come to play for Cypher. Can he hold on to this one frag? He realizes he's there, he has to back away. He may just rocket jump out, which he does. Will he be able to pin him down and take this frag? I'm not too sure if he can, I don't know if he's got enough use for the bull rush, but oh. Cypher's the one. Comes out on top and wins the first map by two frags. Remarkable stuff there. And even looking at the damage, it was uh, 700 more in favor of Cypher. The items as well, 12 to Cypher and 15 to Rafa. They're 70% rail flea. Disgusting, right? He did manage to keep it up all the way through the map. Not something that I would have expected, but then again, this is Cypher. Expect the unexpected. That's one of the favorite things about this player. He is so unorthodox, and I feel like that just makes for such a juicy matchup here, right? Because on the one hand, you've got Rafa, who's really the symbol of control and discipline when it comes to Quake, absolutely demolishing his opponent through sheer 
dedication and just being on top of everything all the time. And then on the other hand, you've got Cypher, who's so quick at adapting and makes these plays that seemingly only he can pull off. Sirius, another well-known Quake player, was in the chat yesterday, and after one of Cypher's matches that ended in the very last second with a clutch play, he just commented and said, it's the Cypher magic. That's it. it. It's the Cypher magic. He does things that no one else can really do. And again, Rafa was so close to finding that frag in the end, but the nail gun stopped him in his tracks. Yeah, look at those percentages as well. You really can't complain there. Cypher played out of his mind, especially towards those last couple of minutes. Just delaying the tempo a tad, just playing for time, but also playing to his advantages. And he did just that. You said it rightly as well. You know, that Cypher magic. To manage to get that first map on the board in this series but just to let people know at home that was the eu server and of course we'll be going to na next it is back and forth here on out in this best of five and you can see as well the item control already mentioned it already got quite a few more items in comparison to rafa we'll have to see what rafa can do next as we're going to get prepared for map number two shortly it will be on molden falls but this is the confidence cypher needed to go out throughout the series Indeed, he does, getting off to an excellent start as his earlier loss against Razy. And again, I just want to highlight that play at the teleporter exit in front of Mega. Cypher going through, fully expecting the bull rush, and instead of going to the left or behind, which is where almost everyone always goes, he just kind of positions himself straight in front of the exit, kind of hugging that pillar in an awkward manner. So Rafa comes out, gets taken by surprise, tries to correct with the bull rush, and instead just ends up slamming into that little pillar, completely stopping his momentum. And of course, the damage reduction that you get with the bull rush as well. So really clever plays from Cypher. That's exactly what I talk about when I'm saying the, the magic, right? The unorthodox plays that you can expect from him. Now, that was map one, of course. We are already getting ready to load into the second one of this series which is molten falls no slash being played this time rafa mindfully banning it away from cypher before we even got into this part of the brackets and then it's going to be the ranger played by cypher versus rafa running the strog yes what is the slash being banned he banned the nicks as well so that won't be used on awoken later on so had a little thought process in terms of the picks and bans to make sure he can get as many advantages as possible and he has done really even losing sadly with the scale on fail it's not something you normally see but you know a lot of these players are adapting and able to try and figure out ways to avoid it which cypher had done throughout the entire course of that first map but yeah on the second map the ranger versus the struggle not something you normally see like you rightly said normally do see like a slash versus yeah. anarchy matchup or anything along those lines but slightly different but we do see the struggle quite a lot as well which means that rafa does have the mobility in play but still the aggression with the orb and just trying to get out of you know a bad situation is still on offer for cypher as well so it's just a question if cypher can keep up with this series lead take it to zero or of course if rafa will tie this up but a lot of assumptions will be made assuming that rafa will probably will come back in this matchup and multiples has definitely been a go-to map for cypher in the past it wasn't really Fight. or didn't go too well against Razy earlier on but let's see if we can change that and rectify his mistakes going into this second map in this best of five Starting off on Cypher's point of view, as we've already discussed, I think we both generally favor the Strog in this matchup just because of the speed that you can get. Even if there's no Slash, you don't have the same level of acceleration, that Crouch Light is still so immensely powerful around the many corners and corridors of this map. But on the other hand, Ranger in the hands of Cypher is always an ace up his sleeve. So Rafa has to be extremely careful not to allow his opponent to get too close. Oh! That would have been something else if that had worked out. Imagine if Cypher had just thrown away the orb, swapped positions, and then managed to close the distance to Rafa as the peeker was still out. That would have been a sick play, but he unfortunately fell just short, and Rafa was very quick to catch on to that, immediately dealing damage with the peeker, and then taking down Cypher just mano at mano. Ooh, Rafa does find him, hits him once, misses the second. Trying to look for the another chance, which he does not. But yeah, that first frag, I think it was more due to the weapons in Cypher's arsenal. He only had the rockets, didn't have the LG to keep him back or the rail to keep his distance. Didn't really have anything. So the all play was the only thing he could have done because if he just sat there and took it from the peaker, it will be basically to his death, to his end, or at some stage, Rafael just came on in with the mobility and speed of the Strog and would have just been on cleanup duty there. As our great rocket there from Rafael, waiting for him to go around. I think that was a 72, so he's going to be pretty pleased with the damage he inflicted onto Cypher there, but now he's going to rotate all the way around. But Cypher knows it's coming, still standing his ground, but he's got 
Taking that first rail, still waiting for Rafa to come on through, but will he be able to use it all to try and get away, which he does not? And there we have it, Rafa extends his lead and still got a huge stack to be on the aggressive with. Oh, Cypher, you don't want to be here right now. He gets away, he gets away with a sliver of health. Absolutely not going to make a play on Heavy just yet. Instead, trying to make a move on the rail. Cypher's being so slow and calculated right now because he knows that Rafa is going to be watching over this weapon. Lands one rail, misses the second. In the end, it was Cypher's slowness right there. Just being so cautious, trying to get around the corner that kind of put himself in a bad position. Good orb. Manages to steal away the Mega, but ultimately it will amount to very little. As he is still just on that base, 100 points of health, zero armor to work with. This is looking good for Rafa. It certainly is. I think he actually railed Cypher as he picked up the Mega, so didn't get to its full effect. Pika didn't work out there too much, but Rafa's not going to be too bothered about that. Still trying to keep the high ground, but now it's dropped down to see if he can inflict any more damage onto Cypher. He knows how weak he is. Cypher, he had to go for something, wouldn't have contested anything at that point. Tried to get the Mega, but sadly he did not. I wasn't able to steal that Mega from him. So again, Rafa looking very good in this second map. Cypher is up 1-0 in this series. Could end up being one already from what we've seen so far from Rafa. Completely turning things around. And he's just finding his time here. Just trying to see exactly what he can find. See if he can get the info on where Cypher could be. But nothing as of yet. As it will be picking up the Mega and we'll find Cypher in the rail area, sorry. And he's going to go straight in to see if he can do anything more. But some good rails from Cypher. He's trying to get away, but not going to happen. Rafa cleans up beautifully again. And now at 5-0. to zero. I'm unconvinced by some of these positional plays by Cypher, right? Um, pushing onto Mega just a few frags ago when all he had was LG and it was so obvious yeah. for Rafa. Or setting up there a few seconds before it spawned. I think even if Mega would have spawned right there, he still would have dropped the frag. So I feel like Cypher's a little careless, a little too aggressive with some of these plays. He needs to slow it down. He still has the time to make a comeback happen. But not if he keeps throwing his life at his opponent over and over again. Now Rafa will be able to take away the heavy. Significant amount of time between the items. There we go. Those rails. That's what Cypher needs. Those shots might be opening the map back up for him. Oh, little fumble on the movement from Rafa right there. Don't think it would have mattered either way. It didn't seem like he wanted to push for Mega immediately. Although he might have. He might have gone straight through the teleporter. Jumped through the right struck and do that extremely quickly. But... Who knows? Cypher at least gets a Mega and is now in a good position for Heavy as well. Okay, sadly that was a missed rail from Cypher. It's getting a bit dangerous now here, Flea. Five minutes left and... Oh, the direct! That just made matters worse. He's pulled all the way back. Rafa now trying to circle around to rail to see if he can... Uh, another direct again! And he's probably thinking to himself, what else can he do to try and out damage his opponent but Cypher now does get away Heavy's up in the next five seconds the Cypher's just getting the high ground so at least he can play with that positional advantage and see if Rafa does try and contest he realizes that he's gonna have it for free but look at this Rafa a lot of discipline showing here good rail again from Cypher this is exactly what we needed to see oh. and look at that pick up as well will he be able to clean up no he does not and Cypher's the one who comes out on top of that engagement. So, first frag here for Cypher. Signs of life here. Hits the first rail. It's going to try and go for the second. But he wants to try and make these risky plays work. He has to. It's molten falls, of course. And at the later stages of this game, he hasn't got the mobility of the Ranger to even try and attempt to catch up to Rafa. Don't get me wrong. He's got the orb, but he's not going to have it in his back pocket all the time. Cypher just isn't landing his shots when he needs to. Rafa has nearly a thousand points of damage more than he does, and it really just shows in terms of overall control as well. The item pickups, Cypher has been doing a good job at stealing some away, but very often when he manages to steal away, say, a Mega or a Heavy, he actually gets punished for it massively. And there, the same ore play that he tried to pull off at the beginning, almost working out this time, regrettably. Not quite all the way, and he couldn't even deny the heavy. So this is starting to look really dire, because if Cypher has to chase Rafa down, 
Three minutes left to go. He is just out spat, right? Yes, he's got the orb, but that's something that you can only use once every 30, 40 seconds. Whereas Rafa has got that consistent crouch lighting whenever he wants it. Yeah, nice so LG though, wow. Nice, good stuff from Cypher to bring that second frag back. Needs to find five more in the next three minutes. Must be Cypher, something Cypher's doing wrong in particular here on this map, because it happened against Razy where he was struggling to get any frags or get anything going. Oh, Rafa no! predicted that straight after the orb as Cypher's done that quite a few times now. And Rafa was like, I don't want to take any risks here. I'm just going to make the assumption that he's going to go straight towards the Mega, which he read correctly. And this could be Curtis now for Cypher, especially too. if he dies here so, so weak. As Rafa's attempted to push in, he still can though. Clean him up just yet, but at least he managed to pick up the heavy. But yeah, like I said before, something Cypher doing in particular on Molten Fours, it must be doing something wrong because it's the same or similar scoreline again, like how it was against Razy. Great rail again from Rafa. And yeah, if Cypher is still in this tournament even after this match, I'm sure he'll be looking to maybe ban Molten Fours instead of going ahead of it. I don't know, we'll have to see. I want to see that move work at least once. Third time that Cypher's tried it, hasn't managed to net him a frag so far. But it's creative, and that's why I love it. One point of health, though. And Rafa just, he knows that as long as he slow plays this and minimizes the risk, this is in, is in the back, right? Seven frags in two minutes. All he's got to do is slow it down, keep his distance, and I think that Cypher knows that this is pretty much over as well, especially since Rafa has now taken away a Mega as well, pushes in with the better stack, the LG will clean up his opponent, and that will be the final nail in the coffin. Rafa, without a shadow of a doubt, is going to be able to tie this series up one to one. And that means that indeed, we are definitely not going to see a 3-0 wipe once more. This is what, the uh, fourth game today? That at least both players managed to secure a map? Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Rafa though, even though there's a minute left remaining, we can uh, easily make the assumption that he's going to take the second map. But there we have it, we have all things have tied up. But yeah, it's like I mentioned before, it's obviously something Cypher's doing clearly, which has uh, happened against Razy earlier on this map and now against Rafa. It's, uh, I know what you were talking about earlier in terms of it wasn't really desperation. Sometimes Cypher just overextended for some of his items on the spawn or maybe going for that trade, which is, ended up being his uh, leading to his death, really, which is a little bit of a shame there. But we'll see what Cypher can do in the uh, next few maps coming up shortly as Cypher's just still trying to Get some pride, gets the fifth frag there, just keeping the scores respectable before we go into this next matchup. But I'm sure he will be already thinking about this third map and how he's going to go about it here. Because, yeah, this one is a, a little bit more one-sided than we expected. And just looking at the items control and everything like that, you can see 21 items for Rafa, 16 for Cypher. So, so I've managed to get some, but not a huge amount. And Rafa with that 52% rail percentage as well, just to... Keep his distance from the entire time, like you also rightly mentioned earlier, Flea. So there we have it. Cypher down for the count this time round, but it means the series is tied up one all. Basically, complete reversal of the initial map, at least in terms of damage, right? Back then, yeah. it was Cypher who was doing most of it, dishing out much more pain than his opponent could muster. But now, Rafa. And I think that has a lot to do with just the movement that he had to work with. Cypher was often just a little too slow to be prepared. You could see it right there in that frag, right? Cypher goes in for the railgun thinking that he's got the time to get a shot off and move out of the way. He fires and before he can even recharge his shot, Rafa has already jumped all the way towards him and is basically sticking it to him with the rockets in the face. So the speed that the Strog had to offer on this map was, I think, crucial and part of why this was a decisive victory in Rafa's favor. And look at the damage count as well, a huge margin there, 1138 more damage in comparison to his opponent. And we got a feeling that it was going to be a bit of a struggle just from the champion picks on Phil Flea. Just looking at the Strog as well, there's you know, a wider variety of strategies you can use for the Strog compared to the Ranger. And we saw some flair from the Ranger from Cypher is what you wanted to do with the orb and, you know, trying to steal some of these items away, not really 
too particular about damage but sometimes it was but it was just a little bit too late or sometimes it ended up being a bit predictable which is not something you normally see every day from cypher but still not out yet like we said before every match today is a best of five grand finals will be a best of seven later on this evening or this morning afternoon wherever you're from watching here at quakecon this year and let's see if Rabbit can keep up this momentum now. He's going to be feeling a lot better about himself after that engagement and just, you know, some very clean frags across the board. And we're going to be switching up now. We're going to be going to Deep Embrace, where we were talking about the champion picks before. But how do you feel this is going to pan out? Because we saw Cypher play on Deep Embrace earlier. I feel like we had a very good start. It was a good control and really dictated the pace. But things got a little bit out of control afterwards because he was using the eyes. And maybe a different champion this time around will do him a bit of a favor. Yeah, indeed, this is an interesting matchup and I think an important one for Cypher. If he gets to be one map down, I would find it very unlikely that he makes his way back into it, ties it up and secures the overall victory. But on the other hand, he is going to have to go up against the Athena and that is going to be a massive challenge. I think at this point, there's little disagreement about this. Rafa, probably the single best Athena player that we currently have in the Quake Pro League. So quick, so accurate with these hooks as well. And on Deep Embrace, we've seen what this champion is capable of, right? It's, it's yeah. essentially a two-layered map. And if you can instantly make your way up from the bottom to the top, no matter the circumstances, I mean, there's only one champion that can do that, and that's Athena. She doesn't need the bounce path, right? Yeah, Doom helps. You can go up the bounce path and then completely change your direction, or you can somewhat skip that, that tricky little jump up to the heavy armor. But Athena, she can get anywhere at any time. So Cypher is going to have to be hyper-aware and that's something that uh, there's been a fumble there repeatedly, right? I still yeah. remember on the very first map of Vale, uh, Cypher was caught on the super shotgun spawn, caught looking completely in the wrong direction as uh, Rafa jumped across to Mega. Cypher was still looking down, hoping or expecting Rafa to drop down in front of him. That didn't happen. He drops a frag. We also saw it a few times here on Molten where Cypher just wasn't looking the right direction. And then out comes Rafa and punishes him for that mistake. So I am hoping for Cypher's sake at least that he can get on point with just a general map awareness and being prepared for anything that Rafa can throw at him. We'll be getting the third map underway shortly just in a few minutes so sit tight won't be too long now until we get underway and the only thing I could talk about Deep Embrace it can be very combat heavy very similar to Corrupted Keep but it will be on the EU server this time around so if it's going to help Cypher in any way we'll have to see hopefully for his sake it will do and um like we saw earlier like the cypher versus razor game on deep and race i did say before that cypher he had a good start he dictated the pace he kind of thought he knew what he was doing a little bit more had a lot of awareness on race he was going to be but we weren't too sure about the ice and pick yeah the turret was great for maybe contesting the heavy or just giving a little bit of insurance to pick it up and just keep his opponent at bay but with the doom it will be a little bit more helpful more mobility here and i think that's what he's looking for just a lot of uh, combat heavy plays from Cypher and just try and do everything he can to keep, of course, the Athena from Rafa under wraps because we've seen it before and how great the Athena can be. You saw Venga playing its Razor with the Athena a while back uh, last month and yeah, it was a real treat in itself, wasn't it, Flea? It was uh, surprised to say the least because I don't normally see the Athena back then, but now we're seeing it a lot more often in comparison as the meta is slowly changing across the mm -hmm. board. But yeah, we'll have to see if Rafa can do anything about that. Rafa had to go for a quick restart of his PC, but he has literally just now rejoined us in the lobby. So we are going to be jumping into this next match in just a second. Now, chat. Interesting about those predictions. It looks like Rafa is still being heavily favored, even though it is tied one to one. Chat. Gotta make some noise, okay? Support the player that you love. I know there's a lot of Liquid fans in here. I know there's a lot of Cypher, Cypher, Cypher guys in here too. So please make yourself be heard. Give your energy to these top level competitors because this is such a legendary matchup and this is one for the history books. It really is indeed. And you gotta remember, these two players were in the grand finals last stage. And this time around, one of these players will get knocked out to the top six. And it's not something we even anticipated. Like, Rafa, no way any of us predicted that at all. Like, the fact that he's come from the uh, winner's side to the grand finals each and every single time for the last, what, 12 to 15 months now? Something silly like that. It's actually an achievement in itself with, you know, those accolades he has. 
and Cypher as well. Like, you know, the fact that he could be knocked out to the top six, which would be a shame. But whoever wins this will make it to the top four and we'll have to face Kilsen in their next series. So whoever's going to continue on after this match, it's going to be a very long, drawn out day for them. And I hope they've got a lot of energy and stamina as they progress through this loser's bracket. Because it's going to be tough. Like we said before, every match is going to be a best of five. And if each one goes to a map four and map five, which it probably will do, considering the skill plateau all these players are at who are left, it's going to be a tough ride. But hopefully we'll see what happens here. We're going to go to Deep Embrace, the third map in this series. Currently one all. And we're going to be starting off with Cypher's PV once again. Both of these players are, of course, incredibly driven, Rafa. Has won three stage finals in a row, wants to add a fourth to that. Cypher has made it to the grand finals twice, finally wants to close it out as well. Good use of the heavy nail gun by Rafa, getting a little bit of the stack down. Now he needs one more rail to finish it up. Can he get it? Switches back to the nail gun and Cypher inconsistent with the super shotgun. He absolutely was in a position where he could have secured the frag right there, but just whiffing his shots couldn't connect. And that's giving Rafa an early 1-0 lead. Now both of the major items are up. Getting a little bit of a switch up, it seems. Cypher will be taking away Heavy this time. Rafa goes for the Mega instead. Yeah, he's going to be kicking himself a tad. Hoping that starting shotgun would seal the deal. First rail in favor of Rafa now. Good try bot as well. 63 as Cypher just trying to hold his ground. But it looks like Rafa's still... Not thinking about going to that side, but instead it's flanked all the way around and managed to get the angle onto Cypher. Cypher's had to back away. Has recovered a little bit, but not enough to re-engage. But at least he's got top mid control and he can rain some rockets down. Depends if Rafa wants to try and go for this. And he does, but the sun is to back away and rightly so. Cypher's actually read that perfectly, knowing that there's a potential chance he may leave the Mega and actually go for him. And now he's going to have to try and go for the retake on this heavy. The offset between the items right now is so huge for Rafa. Cypher, not quite sure about the positioning right there. Again, that's the map awareness that I was talking about, right? Cypher spamming a few rockets over towards that small armor spawn, but Rafa was completely on the other side of the map. So in doing so, he completely gave away his position and allowed Rafa to get that easy rail on him just because Cypher is looking once again in the wrong direction. And this might be extremely punishing, knowing what Athena is capable of. Now Cypher does get Mega this time around, should be able to clean this up as well. He can, perfect time and opportunity as well. Heavy's going to spawn, he can take away uh, rockets and rail usually, but Rafa is so quick on the challenge. Too aggressive, it feels like. He's going to drop two, maybe three frags wow. here. Cypher's aim on point, 45% LG. That's going to make it happen. And the Navi player once more in the lead. Even after picking up the health in the murder hole, still couldn't get away. And Cypher still with a nice, healthy stack. Good try, but it's going to come straight in. Oh, the LG from Cypher. Looking much better this time round. Again, just trying to see if it can stop him from going towards the motor hole. Yes, he does. He actually stops him from getting the two health bubbles. Rafa is still only behind by one frag. We'll pick up the Mega. Heavy's coming in the next 15 seconds. Both items heavily segregated once more. Rafa now looking to see if it can catch Cypher. And he did quite Ooh. a lot. Luckily for him, he yeah. had a little bit of a boost there up towards top mid. And Cypher now is just trying to flank around to try and stop him from nice. going towards the heavy. But still, even though Rafa picked it up and burned it, Cypher still managed to get the frag. That's the power of the Athena, right? You get knocked back into essentially an impossible position. You just hook straight back into the item. Yeah, sure, you drop a frag, but at the very least, you deny it from your opponent and set up for the next fight. And that is exactly what Rafa did. He sacrificed that life, knowing very well that it just gave him an easy way to immediately refrag and keep the distance the same. Ooh. Nice. I think he actually picked up one of the health bubbles as well and not the other. And it was a shame because yeah. it wouldn't have been Rollable other boys, but still extremely weak. Cypher looking much better this time round. Hits the first one, missed the second. Still going to pick up the light. The Mega is up. No one's approached it yet, but Cypher's just checking to see if Rafa's going to go for it, which he does not. So three Mega for Cypher. Four minutes in. Can Cypher hold this lead? I did say that this is going to be a very combat-heavy matchup. And it's looking much better so far for Cypher. Managed to double 
the frags of Rafa pushing the game with the LG and sadly just has to back away. He's going to not fully retreat though. He's going to double back and see if he can clean him up down to 17 HP. But Rafa's just a tiny bit weaker. We'll find him in that murder hole. But you can see Rafa doesn't want to take any more risks here. And Cypher has to back away. Mega is up. And now Cypher's on that recovery process. So much respect given between these two players. Now these rockets, they are inhumane. Nice. The rockets from Belarus, you gotta give them a shout out now and then because that was nasty. It looks like Rafa is in a pretty decent position to find something before Rafa just gets shut down just like that. Cypher, rocket into rail, wow. make it another one. Jesus, what is happening right now? Cypher landing every shot that matters. Gets away with the Mega as well. Finds Rafa once more. These reads are so fired. He's definitely feeling it now, Flea. Oh, even though he hooked straight in. Yeah, Rafa just accepted his fate there. That was literally a done deal. This is the Cypher we want to see in the final day and the direct straight afterwards. I just feel like at this point... The stars are aligning here for Cypher and already again ripping Rafa apart. 15 to 4. Hits the first. Will he go for the second? Yes, he does. Just doing absolute work here. And I'm sure the Cypher fans are going to be extremely pleased with how this result is turning out so far. As he's going to try and clean them up with the with the shotgun. The shotgun, not going to lie, not being Cypher's best friends here. But it doesn't matter as the scoreline speaks for itself. Now, this is not over yet. For pretty much any other matchup, I would have said, okay, 12 frags of elite, yeah, this is a done deal. But this is Rafa. He has got this miraculous ability to forge even the wildest of comebacks, but 13 frags, that might be even beyond his ability. He needs to drop some magic. And he needs to drop it soon, because every single second that he's not landing a frag, Cypher is just sitting pretty. Rafa does come back from a 12 frag deficit. It'd definitely be a comeback. Well, if anything here, Rafa's still just standing his ground, but again, he knows he hasn't got the stack. It's just a matter of time before Cypher does creep on in, but doesn't get the right grapple in to pick up those bell forwards. But yeah, it's almost said and done here. And I don't think I'd say that for Cypher with three minutes left. As Rafa's felt like he's run out of ideas. No plans to decide on how to come back from this. And sadly, the Athena didn't work out too much for him. It's Cypher now just trying to do the best he can is to add more frags to the tally. They both trade out 20 to 7. Would you have expected this scoreline here, Flea? Not at all. Not at all. I was worried <laughs> that we might see the opposite based on just how Rafa has been outmaneuvering Cypher on the previous map. But uh, this is madness and both of these players, they know that it is done by now. There is nothing that Rafa can do at this point. Two and a half minutes, even for the greatest of all time, this is an insurmountable challenge. Now, if we take a look at the statistics, we see that Cypher has 700 damage over his opponent. But other than that, the items are actually favoring Rafa. Rafa has more of the item pickups, but Cypher has just been playing such an aggressive game constantly. Like, the small armor. Cypher nearly has twice as many smalls as his opponent does, and that just shows how aggressive he's been throughout this entire game. He goes in for the damage, very quickly falls back on those smaller resources around the map, and that's really what's been elevating his play in this matchup. So, well played, Cypher. He's going to be putting himself on match point, Lethal. I just can't believe it. Rafa... One step closer to getting knocked out of this tournament. For anyone watching or new watching to Quake, Rafa has pretty much been the blueprint of Quake. Especially over the last couple of years, but no one has been able to defeat him in any series over the last 12 to 15 months. And this really could be it. This could be Cypher's chance just to knock him out of this tournament. Hit one of his good friends, Avic, did it in the winner's bracket. Can he silver deal here and you know just going looking at the accuracy and the percentages cypher 66 percent now down to 62 but it's all about the lg damage for three so play 3271 damage with the lg and we haven't even finished the match yet indeed we have not 10 frag difference this is 
This is not like the Rafa that we are used to seeing, but Lethal, I mentioned it before we got into this series, right? They've played each other five times during the Pro League. And Cypher won two out of those. That leaves Rafa, of course, with a majority of the wins. Sure, there's no denying that, but a track record of winning two out of five games against Rafa? I, that's just not something that I don't think anyone else can say they've managed to achieve during the Quake Pro League. Cypher really is one of the best suited players to take down Rafa. And he's showing that in this matchup as well. He really is indeed. Cypher is so close from winning this series. You can literally smell it. So there we have it. 2-1 in favor of Cypher in terms of the series scoreline. One more map and Rafa will actually fail to not only make it to the grand final, but will end up placing top six. And I'm going to say it's early days, even though there's one, maybe two more maps left, because it's going to feel like a long, long time. Just because Cypher, even though it could just be 10 minutes between him and making it into the next round, it's going to feel a lot more than that. It's going to feel like a lifetime here, Flea, coming up in this next map. Absolutely. Now, on the other hand, we do know that Rafa is an extremely resilient player, right? He performs under pressure like none other. This is not the first time, this tournament even, that he came down to that very last map that he had to win. It happened against Sparty yesterday as well. Sparty came very close to actually knocking Rafa out of the tournament, but the Liquid player persevered, clung to his position, and ultimately continued making his way through the lower bracket. So the prospect of having to win both of the upcoming maps is daunting, to say the least, but if anyone can do it, it is going to be Rafa. Look at all those hit percentages as well. You've got to take into account as well the amount of shots that he fired with the LG. Yeah. Cypher, 3,271 damage. Like, that's Jesus. brutal. That really is brutal. And, you know, Rafa, sadly for him, he was on the back end of it. And looking at the damage, though, the damage wasn't really too far off overall. You see, they're just under 360. So, yeah, don't get me wrong, he was doing the damage, but couldn't really do much else. It wasn't really too far behind in terms of the hit percentages either. But you got to remember, though, 63% rail against an Athena. That's just, uh, even then though, with the LG, 44% against an Athena is so, so difficult for any person to achieve. And he's just about doing it. So here we go, match point for Cypher. We are going to be going onto the fourth map, which will be coming up shortly, and that will be on Awoken. And we mentioned yeah. earlier that uh, Rafa did ban the Knicks uh, preemptively just due to the fact that he knew that there's a slight chance that Cypher may get first pick and also select the Knicks on Awoken, but he won't this time around. He's actually selected the Viser, which is uh, going to give him some positional advantage here against that Death Knight. And if it comes to it, we will be going on to Exile, where we've got the Kill versus the Eisen. We don't really see the Eisen that much on Exile, but that's something we can talk about later on as this is still potentially the final map and is going to be match point for Cypher. We'll be switching to NA, so at least Rafa's got a little bit of leeway, but we'll have to see. But I must say, though, this is not how I expected the series to pan out. Not even remotely. Now, the name of the game for Cypher is going to be Distance. He wants to put distance between himself and Rafa, right? He knows that his ability is one that works the best when you're far away from your opponent, when you can line up those shots and take them by surprise when they're still looking in the wrong direction. He also knows that the absolute forte of his opponent is that Flame Strike that works so well in close quarters at point blank range, tremendously tremendous amounts of damage you can put out in a fraction of a second, so he absolutely does not want to get caught within range of that ability. On the other hand, Rafa, of course, is going into this one with the complete opposite the game plan. He does not want to get into a railgun fight with Rafa, or with Cypher, rather, after what we've seen on the previous map. He does not even want to go for an LG battle again after what we've seen on the previous map. He wants to get up close and personal, rockets and flame strike. That is probably the way that he wants to approach this map. 
of course with the piercing sight he can um, go for those items slightly earlier or just find out where his opponent is in terms of his position so that way he knows what he wants to do a couple of seconds before he tries and go on the offensive and like you said though we'll be relying on those rockets and the flame strike later on it's going to be really tough because it's not a matchup we see every day don't get me wrong we see the buyers and the death knight but not together in this kind of cycle but yeah, it's going to be huge for Cypher if he does take this map. It means it will take this series and Rafa will end up failing to even make it to top four, which, like we said before, will be a massive shock and probably one of the biggest upsets of the tournament here. We said as well, Cypher, his friend, Avic already dropped him down to losers. And this time around, we can see if he can finish things up. So will Rafa be able to take us to a map number five or will Cypher finish the job? knock Rafa out and head into the next stage of the loser's round and the loser's bracket against Kilson straight after this. Let's find that now. Starting off from Cypher's POV. Just waiting for him, daring for him to go for this telly. Still holding on to that piece in sight, but it's got Tom mid control. Now realizes exactly where Rafa is. Hits the first rail. Doesn't get the chance to even hit the second, but now Rafa has to back away. Good opening railgun by Cypher. I think he realized that after he landed that shot, he, there was nothing he could really do to try and deny Rail from his opponent. So he took that opportunity to get the LG himself. That was the one weapon he was still missing in his arsenal. Very patient. Again, Rail's being exchanged. Oh, Cypher's got to be careful because he knows that he might be giving up an angle. And very deliberately leaving a delay between these items. Flames coming out, they hurt. Health bubble. That one isn't up, Cypher. You got to go look somewhere else. And that's given his opponent a fair bit of information. That's why he didn't go for that small armor. He wanted it so badly, but he knew that Rafa knew exactly which corner of the map he was winding in. And so instead, he just went straight out of bounce pads, trying to put distance and a buffer between him and his opponent. I like this as well. Cypher just using that piercing sight to confirm if he gets a free heavy, which he does. Rafa's top mid goes straight towards the mega, picks it up. And Cypher now just going back for the TP, just keeping Rafa guessing directly underneath him gone back through the telly to wait and see how or where Raph is going to progress hits the first rail though still hasn't bagged that first frag but it looks like it will come in time depending on where Cypher is going to go next but so far so good good prediction there from Cypher with that rocket hitting that 56 but it doesn't change the fact that the stack is still much bigger in comparison to Cypher's trying to get a nice little rail angle there we we'll need to back away. Full effect that piercing inside. Some good rockets, so just to keep him at bay. And Cypher's just been hanging on for dear life over the last 90 seconds. This is the kind of situation that Rafa really shines in, right? He knows that he's in full control. He knows that he is so aware of where his opponent is at. He doesn't have to put himself in any risky sort of fight. Instead, he can just keep running the map slowly but surely, closing that net around his opponent, waiting for that perfect situation to strike. And here we go, Flame Strike comes out. And indeed, that ability proved to be instrumental to his frag there, as it is the American Liquid player who will get the first kill of this map. And keep in mind, this is an important one too. If Rafa loses Awoken, he is out of the finals. That's a huge thing to discuss there. Rafa is going to see if he can do... Oh, the rockets Whoa. from Cypher just way too good. Cypher finds him though, going through the telly, finishes him up with the starting shotgun. With that, in that range as well, he's only a 19 HP. Will he have to stop before he gets to Mega? He does not. Rafa sneaks in. Steals the Mega as well. Managed to regain the lead. So Rafa now managed to get most of the weapons just looking for that LG. Not going to go for it yet. Just going to keep his distance. And the problem is for him, Cypher is around that LG area. It's waiting for him to go for the telly, which is not going to happen. Going to pick up the heavy shortly, but Cypher is looking to do some damage before he can actually go for it. He's going to attempt it anyway, though. Does steal the heavy from Rafa, but at what cost? Using all these rockets, brilliant stuff there from Rafa. Extends his lead. Three and a half minutes into this with the Mega coming up now. And Cypher steals the Mega, just stealing each other's items. But it doesn't what? matter. Rafa still wins that engagement with 20 HP. That absolutely looked like it should have been Cypher's frag. But Rafa hugging that corner, peeking right back with the super shotgun in hand. Manages to fire first. And get another frag on Cypher. That could have marked a real nice position. 
for Cypher to start mounting a comeback, but it is still Rathos holding down the item. Good use of the Flame Strike as well, knows exactly where his opponent is going to come from. And Cypher just burned another one of his abilities without really gaining anything from it. Just dare him to go for that telly. Raph is not going to... Oh, actually, even after getting that first rail, he's looking for a little bit more. It hits the second. Oh, that was so close, trying to pick him apart, which he has done. Now it hits onto the fifth frag mark. This is going to be a bit dangerous now for the Cypher here as Raph has picked up that Mega. Heavy's up in the next 15 seconds. Waiting for Cypher Danfin to come out from top mid, which he gets a nice amount of damage there. It's actually rotated all the way around. Picks out at the perfect time. And now just doing a little bit of tickle onto where he was placed at top mid. So Rafa, huge stack once again. And Cypher just having a little bit of trouble breaking this setup. Nice rocket, misses the rail. And maybe let's get a little bit more damage with the other rocket, which he does now, but still picks up the Mega as we're now at the halfway stage. Cypher desperately trying to hold his opponent off bay, or at bay rather, by using the Tribolt. And just look at the respect that Rafa showed right there. He absolutely had a massive stack advantage, but still didn't want to push in with the LG because he knows how hard Cypher has been hitting with that weapon. So instead, he's just going to leave his opponent there and just instead maneuver around onto that center area of the map. Really good timing by Rafa again. One point of health down to 11. Finally, Cypher manages to nail the kill shot. Good read there as well, unfortunately lacking in terms of execution, but this could be the moment where everything turns around for Cypher. He is the one who is in position for the next major item, which will be the heavy. Rafa doesn't have a rockets yet, and oof. It is the American who gets the first shot off. Oh, Make yeah. it two. Yeah, this is really not good for Cypher. He manages to take away heavy, I think, most of the time. Yeah, he's got twice as many heavy pickups as Rafa does, but lethal. How many of those have been free? I, I can barely think of a single one where Cypher picked up that major item without paying a serious price with a lot of rockets or railgun damage coming his way. That has been a right bully for the heavy. Cypher's hit the first rail. Good tribolt damage there. Almost hits the second. Oh, he does manage to hit the third at least. Will he be able to clean him up? This would be a perfect chance for Cypher. And he does it. Now he's only two frags behind. Hits Mega. Is going to dive in with the LG, but decides to go for the rotation. Use that piercing sight to full shebang. Got a 77 with the tribal. Great stuff there from Scythe. He's going to try to stop him and go for the telly, but he's already gone through. The light has appeared at the perfect time. Heavy's up in the next few seconds, though. So, of course, Scythe is going to be prioritizing that item. Has to pull back. A few minutes left. Raph is so, so weak. This could be Scythe's time to go on the offensive here. He has been, in all fairness, over the last 30 seconds. He's picked up the Mega, great stack, and even if he takes out Rafa here, he can scone the aggressive straight afterwards. Good flame strike, but it's going to be nowhere near enough. That's a good kill from Cypher, but unfortunately for him, he took a whole lot of damage in doing so by dropping straight onto Rafa's LG. And that has made it very difficult for him to contest for the heavy right off the bat, meaning that Rafa did manage to pick up that item. But those good rails. They are working wonders for Cypher. 52% on the railgun versus 52 by Rafa as well. Both of them hitting the exact same accuracy. And now this is a very tense game. Cypher has to be so careful. I fear that if he drops any more frags, this might become too difficult to catch up in those final two minutes. But he still has to apply pressure. Look for an opportunity. Piers inside again to look at the angle where Rafa's going to be holding from good LG. Almost finished him, but he's got the Mega. Oh, he actually finished him off the heavy machine gun. That Mega couldn't have come up at the perfect time. All tied up here as Rafa's tournament life is on the line. As we've only got 90 seconds left of play. Could go to sudden death, so his sudden death, depending on circumstances. But Rafa hits a crucial rail there to... Slowly even up the stacks, but it looks like Cypher was giving up that heavy. Good rail there. Tries to hit the second, which he doesn't. And Rafa's just gone straight for the TP, going straight to top mid. But the tri is going to indicate exactly where he is. Picks up the Mega as Rafa hits the rail, but he's so weak. He's actually coming straight out. Surely <gasps> not. Rafa oh. actually comes out on top. 
14 HP, but Scyther's gonna come in for the trade. But the flame strike, no. it's just too much. No. Scyther still finishes in with the starting shotgun. 22 HP left, all tied up again, and 50 seconds left here, Flea. How did that even happen? Rafa just absolutely pushing at point blank range with multiple railgun shots. So uncharacteristic from the master of all weapons in the game who is so deliberate about his choices of weaponry in each and every engagement. And then he pulls out that little bit of magic out of his pocket. Now Heavy is about to spawn. Uh, not sure about what Cypher's doing here. He had position. He was in a really good spot to get a hold of the Heavy, but kind of gave it up for free and now there's still six seconds left before Mega. He cannot meaningfully make a move for this, finds himself in a bad spot. That guarantees Rafa the pickup of the item. Cypher, how are you going to deal with this? Oh, he's going through, that's the wrong no! play. Absolutely not. Ugh. Some shoddy decision making at the end there by Cypher, I feel like he... Most definitely could have done more with that. So the execution near the end also not always on point, right? That, that moment where Rafa just ran into the LG room and he faced him with the super shotgun. Cypher took a monumental amount of damage. And I really think that that is a bit of a turning point for those final few minutes, right? If Cypher had managed to just clean that up instantly, he would have been able to move on to the heavy. He would have had all the weapons, full control with just a minute left on the clock or so. But instead, he took so much damage that he had to give up some ground to Rafa, and that proved to be disastrous in the end. I still can't believe Rafa got away with that. He definitely, yeah. by any means, should not have done. That was, we talk about risky plays, but yeah, that was just unheard of. And as if he did get away with that, what, he was on 12 HP, something like that at the time? And the risk actually paid off. And we saw some good trades overall as well. And as if we're going to a map number five, this one map is going to decide who's going to go through to play against Kilsen in the next round of the loser's bracket and who's going to be going home having to finish in the top six. Look at that as well. Almost the exact rail percentages. And we'll be switching to EU here fully. So I don't know about you, but Rafa is going to be thinking to himself, not only by in terms of which server, but it's going to be on exile and you know a few players in the past like maxter is a great example who's um really taken it to the bitter end against rafa but could this be cypher's time to defeat rafa here at quakecon to move on forward into the loser's bracket difficult to say lethal um I know. just <laughs> just looking at the map alone exile i would favor rafa I think that Rafa is incredibly strong on Exile. And while Cypher has, of course, repeatedly managed to beat strong opponents on this map, it's really not the kind of arena that I look at and go, yes, this, this is something where Cypher is really going to thrive in. So just on the map alone, I would kind of favor Rafa. I'm also curious to see how this is going to go with the Keel pick, right? Keel is definitely not a champion you see played on this map every single day. Aizen, not exactly a household name either, but there's a lot of utility you can get out of that turret, especially around those two teleporters. can be so useful to get information, deal damage, distract your opponent from two sources of damage in the heat of the battle. So, I don't know. We know that Cypher is really good at Keel, but we also know that Rafa has essentially mastered every single champion in the pool. So, I don't know. I don't know. On paper, I would favor Rafa here, but this absolutely could go either way again. Flea, you're the human Quakeopedia. You should know. You're the person we have to rely on in terms of what's going to happen in yeah, the sure. fight. But do you know what? You're so right, though. Is As if it comes to this, both these players' tournament life is on the line here, going into exile. Two champions we see on rare, rare occurrences on exile, but now they're both coming up against each other here. I want to know what ideas Rafa has with the turret with the Aizen on Exile. We've, I think I've seen the kill once played this weekend on Exile, but it's like you said before, like I've said before as well, it's not something we normally see. And uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be very combat heavy. And this is what Cypher excels at. He wants to continue on with as well. It's going to, going to be an extremely tough road here. We don't really want to see either of these players get knocked out. But sadly, one of them are going to have to. And I'm very interested to see 
what chat thinks and they can't decide either so not only you can't decide here fleet <laughs> neither can chat literally <laughs> deadlock 50 50. 2.2 million versus 2.2 .2 million channel points rarely do you see this amount of investment on chats and and of course it is completely warranted this time around we've got navi cypher taking on liquid rafa in the lower bracket bringing it all the way to the fifth and final map of this series the winner will progress still has a lifeline through the lower bracket whereas the loser is going to have to leave us already and drop out of the tournament making it to the final six but not beyond that so this is one of the most crucial matchups it is so weird to think about rafa not making it to a grand finals he's managed to do so three times in a row already but cypher might be the one to foil his efforts here so guys at home is it gonna happen is rafa finally gonna get taken down after his 12 to 15th month streak of victories no one's been able to stop him this is it this is map number five this for a place in the top four against Kilson in the next round, not the grand final. And let's see what both players are going to get up to here already. A bit of a scuffle down bottom mid. Cypher going straight for that mega. And now both of them are going to see if they can try and feed each other out. Slow, methodical start. I think that's exactly what we were expecting. Both players know exactly what is on the line this time. And they are going to play as careful and as cautious as they can up until they feel that the odds favor them. Quake is to a significant extent a game of probabilities. And you don't want to put yourself in a situation where the odds favor the opponent. Big delay on the items already. Oh, Cypher. Oh, Cypher. I don't know if that was intentional. No, that small little misstep is going to cost him his life and the Mega. That is an incredibly incredibly devastating misplay just a minute into this matchup no rafa gets yet another frag this is not looking good for the navi player that's gonna be a huge confidence boost i think both players were fumbling a tad at the start now rafa is feeling it a little bit more especially with the kill and that stack Siphon needs to try and back away and keep his distance. He's trying to. Good LG, though, but good rail there from Rafa. The Mega's been picked up from Cypher, but it didn't last too much longer. Will he clean him up with the shotgun? He does not. Cypher comes back. Shouldn't have been able to, but working his magic once again. He's able to try and recover, but oh, almost got Singo in there, but he does not. Gets taken down anyway. Rafa brings it back 3-1. to one. Nice heavy machine gun. I think pretty unexpected for Rafa at that range, at least. Cypher, what are you doing? I, I'm still on Cypher's perspective. He fell off the same ledge as he did at the beginning when he just completely missed out on the Mega. These fumbles on the movement, they can be so devastating. And now he's stuck in a really bad position and Rafa is obviously not going to allow him to escape. Cypher is beating himself right now, Lethal. This is... Rafa's, of course, playing tremendously well, but these small mistakes are really giving it to his opponent. It really is indeed. So it comes down. Good direct to start things off. Trying to keep him at bay. Does get the Mega, so... It's another lifeline for Cypher here. Going straight in for the kill. With that LG, just evens up the stack and that uh, rail straight afterwards. Beautiful. Again from Cypher, just going to rotate around to get ready for this next light. Just trying to see if Rafa goes for the LG. So at least he tries to contest that weapon. Ah, oh, good pineapple there. Trying to wait for the go towards the heavy. Finally gets it. Will he burn it? Will he be able to take him out here? Ah, oh, that's great stuff again from Cypher. All tied up here, Flea. And we're only three minutes in, but I'm sure to these two players, it's going to feel like a lifetime. I don't think my heart can take much more of this lethal. Cypher looking for the brilliant rail. We'll have to clean it up with the shotgun instead. Rafa kind of dropping right into his lap. And now Cypher is working on a rotation on his own. He still doesn't have rockets. It's a weapon he's definitely going to want to get his hands on sooner rather than later. But he's making it work with LG and rail alone, at least for the time being. But see, this is the kind of situation where you need a rocket to comfortably able to push in with just LG at this range. That is tricky. 
See, he he's trying to make it work with the nail, or rather the grenades, but they are just not as accurate. They don't do as much as rockets. And that lack of the weapon proved to be instrumental to Cypher dropping a frag right there. Now it's all tied up again, 5-5. Five to five. Still though, Cypher has the stack. Not anymore though, after picking up those lights. Rafa heading towards the Mega. Cypher knows he needs to give Vad up. Just trying to get all the weapons back in his arsenal. Rafa now. Dropping down from top rockets to see if he can get the flank on, which he does not. Continue to pick up all the weaponry. Cypher's playing is much slower than usual. Actually expects a net good direct, but the pineapples do connect a bit. And having to drop the turret just for extra insurance onto that heavy. Rafa now going straight for the TP to see if he can catch Cypher, which he does not. As he's still down below. He isn't going to progress through yet. And finally he does. Perfectly timed. Will he be able to take him out? He does. Cypher now retakes the lead. And he will immediately be able to take away the Mega as well. Now make his way onto Heavy, but I think that Rafa is going to try and set up before him. There's still a turret down there, so Cypher will have to take down that turret before he can make a move. I think he realized that he was out of position too early and decides not to even go for it. Instead, getting some more railgun ammo as well as a small armor. Clever decision, but he's got to be careful because Rafa has been rather consistently out positioning him this map. And Cypher is now once again relegated to the lower area of this map. And that makes it difficult. Cypher can't get up straight away. That's a decent amount of rocket damage. And now he's gonna hold his ground onto the heavy. The LG needs to be sublime or the rockets neither really connecting. Does get away with picking up the heavy. Can oh! he find the kill shot? Beautiful! Nailing Rafa to the wall right there. And now Cypher is two frags up. And again, look at the stacks. Does have to worry about that trade potential. Mega's up in the next couple of seconds. Rafa's trying to get ready for it, though. Will he come through the TP? I'm not too sure if he will or not. No, he's just standing his ground bottom mid. Oh, the patience, the discipline from Cypher here. Doesn't hit the other, but it's fine. The damage has already been done. The heavy it has been taken by Rafa. So this is Rafa's opportunity now to come back here. Oh, he's expecting him to come from the rocket area. It's only on 10 HP. Oh, Rafa does take a number 40, picks it up. Picks up the light himself underneath. It's only one frag behind. That was such a good play by Rafa to make a move on the Mega from below, right? Yes, he didn't get it himself, but he was delaying Cypher so long enough with that LG to ensure that the timings were essentially lined up again and effectively preventing Cypher from first picking up Mega, running all the way around and then continuing along that same rotation onto the Heavy as well. So simply by showing presence, by doing LG damage at a distance, he delayed Cypher long enough to the point that Rafa is now the one who's cycling both of the items. And Cypher's kind of in trouble. He's outstacked and there's no place you want to be when you're the big body champion with the huge hitbox. Rafa's even going to take away that small armor at the bottom towards rail. And as we're all tied up, it's actually Cypher with a huge play. Perfect read catching Rafa out of the teleporter. This is so tense, seven to seven, seven minutes in. Who will take it? So I did make some great rotations earlier on though, even if he was on the back foot. But look at that, Rafa now with the lead. Why one frag, two and a half minutes left. Rafa just daring him to come through. It looks like he's gonna make a different rotation instead. Heavy's up in the next couple of seconds. Cypher knows exactly on his whereabouts and Rafa has backed away to pick up the Mega. Both items of the timings are almost equal, only by a couple of seconds. So they won't be able to contest both here. Rafa still has that turret if it ever needs to be deployed. Just trying to keep that positional advantage. Wait and see where Cypher's going to go next. These rails are going to be so, so important. Doesn't get the information he needs from the tri -bolt. They will find each other though. Cypher just misses that first initial rail, but Rafa will pick up the heavy and Cypher just picks up that mega. But look at the stack that Cypher still has. Because he took essentially no damage, he's basically still as stacked as he could possibly get. Now Rafa also has got a whole lot of resources to work with, but now we're getting into the territory of where the heavy champions have that higher base stack. So they are inherently better suited to take these kinds of fight. Out comes the turret. This is so messy and Rafa will clean it up. I wanted to point this out earlier as well, Lethal, but the kill 
the pick just hasn't really been working out for Cypher, and that's exactly what I was worried about as well. Now Rafa should be able to get another one here. Oh, okay. Kind of messes up the movement there himself, giving his opponent still a lifeline. One minute left, two frags to go. Can Cypher make it happen? Those two missed rails are giving him a way in. Maybe an opportunity to take away the heavy, but the rockets are devastating. And Rafa knows that he doesn't have to stick around and engage. Cypher, what can he do? Can he find his opponent twice in these final 45 seconds? He's on the hunt, but the target's gonna be directly... Oh, he just missed that first rail, but look at the damage. Cypher's already taken 40 seconds left. Here he's up in the next 10 seconds. Rafa's just hitting all these rails. If he takes this, then it's literally gonna be the end of Cypher. Yeah. And now there's only 30 seconds left. Don't get me wrong, he'll have a... Good starting stack, but it's just nowhere near going to be enough now. Cypher, it's a shame. He almost had it. Almost took down Rafa, but it just wasn't to be. It's now Rafa will take this map and the series 3-2. to two, And honestly, it could have gone either way. Great series overall. Right to the bitter end. You saw there was a lot of nerves from both players from the very get-go. A few missed shots, a few movement misplays. But in the end, Rafa finally managed to close out that series. And that's only the beginning. We've still got a lot more matches to come from him later on. Absolutely. Now, looking back at that final map, I think the keel pick was a key factor of Cypher's downfall. It just really wasn't working out for him, and most of the time he just proved to be a very large hitbox for Rafa to pelt with more and more damage. The grenades, yeah, he connected a few here and there, but they were never a decisive factor. If we look at the utility of those abilities alone, I think that it's very clear that Rafa got so much more use out of the turret than, Ra than Cypher did out of those grenades. I think that Rafa, incredibly intelligent player, made really good use of those turrets, almost always having them up in the middle of a fight just to deny access, just to split his opponent's attention between two sources of damage. But anyways, I'm very curious to hear what Big Papa Wheat has got to say about that, because that was Me one too. hell of a matchup. <laughs> Uh, one hell of a matchup is a great yeah. way to to put it out there. You know, back and forth the entire time. Uh, we said that this was a rematch of the Stage 2 Finals, and it was even better than that one, I think. Uh, you know, certainly some games where we saw domination from both players. I think it was specifically uh, Deep Embrace, where in the first couple minutes, I was like, oh, wow, Rafa's, like, really on fire. And then you blink, and suddenly... Here is uh, a Cypher with 20 frags, you know? It's just, it was absolutely just um, incredible to watch these two. This is the type of gameplay with Quake that makes me so excited uh, about being here on a championship Saturday because we're not even, we've got four matches until the final, and this is the type of play that is being put up. Uh, agree with you about the, the keel pick. I think early on, you're really thinking about the 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 stack advantage that you might have but i always see these situations and you know grenades can go both ways sometimes they're super helpful and you're just like bursting down damage and other times not so much definitely briefly that the turret seemed to be a much better wingman in that particular one than the grenades did so uh amazing game i want to give just a shout out to cypher uh, some incredible play not only all throughout the season but it's been great to to hear from him and get some insight into how he improved his game and was looking at this overall um anyway i i, I don't really have anything else to say that wouldn't be repeating <laughs> you so why don't we bring on the winner of that matchup who might be a little out of breath i don't know but let's bring rafa to the desk and see how he's doing rafa it goes all five games congratulations uh you you pull it out there at, at the end and i, I want to talk actually about map five because i think um you know yesterday you talked about endurance you talked mm -hmm. about that this is going to be a tournament of endurance and today's proven to be just that as almost every single series has gone the distance so when you're thinking about your own endurance and you're on map four and some maps have gone your way and a few maps haven't so much um, you know, what are you thinking when you're going into that final map in a much different scenario where tournament life is on the line and you're up against an opponent that, uh, you know, you know, can has the potential to take the best out of you? 
Yeah, I'm at that point, let's say like map four, it's elimination game. It's like, what adjustments do I need to make playstyle difference wise going into this last map and the fifth map, hopefully, uh, because it needs to happen now. There is no extra time to try to, you know, adjust your game style and things like that. So you really have to have a plan like going in and um, and just you just got to erase everything else. Just as soon as the game starts, maps one through three don't matter. All that matters is right now, because if you don't win this shit, you're out anyway. So um, thankfully, you know, I've had a lot of experience dealing with that. Uh, and it's something that typically I'm pretty good at being able to just wipe the slate clean and just go forward. And um, yeah, definitely needed that today because uh, he was playing very, very strong. Um, yeah, I I don't know how anybody could ever win map three against his LG. Like <laughs> any matchup, it doesn't matter. I felt like I was playing clutch and I looked at my champion. I was like, am I sure I'm on the right one? I was like, just being destroyed. So, you know, I just tried to adjust my game plan based off of how the first three maps went. And uh, I'm really glad um, that I was able to pull it off. Now, I'm going to, sadly for you, I'm going to go back to that Deep Embrace game. And I know you're getting nightmares and bad flashbacks already. And also, congratulations, of course, in that series, cutting it so, so close. And then you've got plenty more matches to come anyway. But what do you feel like you could have done differently? Do you feel like you could have done anything differently? Because like you said before, his LG was just remarkable. I think he hit over 3,200 damage against an Athena, you know, one of his light yeah. champions. It's a very difficult task in itself. Yeah, it's just... Uh... The only way that I could have won that matchup at all is somehow hit every rail and stay out of LG range. But that's asking a lot of yourself to do, especially with how hard he was hitting that specific game. So, and in that matchup, you need to do a lot of like peeking and readjusting positioning with your grapples. Mm. And it felt like every time that like I peeked for a fight, I took like 80 damage instantly. And so it was just, okay, well, now I'm really weak. <laughs> and I don't really... <laughs> have much else to do so i have to like commit to certain fights otherwise if i just ran and he just chased me then i wouldn't be dealing any damage so i have to try to hope for the best sometimes so um typically the matchup plays a lot more even than that but uh you know we all have games like that where we just do not miss so it was just uh, you know props to him Rafa, congratulations. Well played. That was a sick series. Incredibly enjoyable to watch as well. I'm just going to ask you about the upcoming match, which is going to be against Kilson. Kilson has been looking really strong as well. Just took down Avec earlier today. How do you feel about going up against him now? Um, about the same as I did, uh, was it like two, two stages ago, I think? Like one or two stages yeah. ago we played. Um, just... He's going to be in really good shape. He always is. Uh, it's always very interesting to play him uh, because I think our champ pools are very even and the way that we think about the game and approach, like how we draft. So, um, yeah, I I'm really looking forward to it. Like, it's going to be really exciting. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I can overcome, you know, because he's been playing very, very well and uh, just got to take it one match at a time. All right, well, good Rafa, luck. again, congratulations. Yes, good luck in your next matchup. You get a little bit of a breather because we're going to the upper bracket. Uh, but congratulations on your win. Uh, good games and good luck uh, in your matches. Thanks, guys. Approaching. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, Rafa takes it over Cypher. And we talked about how the storyline changes. The map is covered in a fog of war when Rafa is dropped down to the lower bracket, but he's been fighting back. And as you heard it here, I agree with Rafa. I think his matchup versus Kilson is going to be pretty exciting. And to hear a player say that too makes me double down on that statement. But uh, <laughs> Lethal and Flea, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, it's time for the upper bracket finals. Wenger taking on Razy, two teammates going at it. The Maestro boys going to fire things up right here for day three of QuakeCon and the QPL World Championships. I'm DJ Wheat, and we will be back with more right after this. <laughs> 